Hey everybody, welcome back to Workers of Resources, Soviet Republic. I hope you're having a great day today. Today, we're going to take a look at reconstruction. Because the reconstruction office is done. I'm going to rename it, actually. Charlevinsk. I can spell. Vinsk Reconstruction Office. Wow. Office. There. The reconstruction office. Now, this office is dedicated to only reconstruction projects. So here's what I want to do. The auto search here, it's going to be auto searching, of course, but it's going to take and look for reconstruction projects that are above 40%. At the moment, I think I'm going to try that. 50% is the default. I'm going to bring it down because we actually have a lot of stuff to do. Let me just take a look at the overlays. And if I take a look at wear and tear on the overlays, a couple here, 51, 52, 51, 51. Okay, but there's also quite a few that are getting close to that. 46, right? They're over here too. There's like uh, uh, 45 right here, right? So I, I kind of want to take a look and see what the reconstruction office is all about and adjust it from there. So first thing first, I want to take this construction office. I'm going to change the source of your prefab panels to here. I just want you to be able to get them. So now you can get them. Then I'm going to copy the sources all the way over like this. So now the reconstruction office will also get their prefab panels from here. That's not supposed to be that way for long, but it is uh, until I get uh, better infrastructure in place for rails and, and start working it that way. There's still a few little train track areas here where I need to uh, get the rail done. And uh, we're also working our way all the way over here. This is nearly completed. I got to get this station up and then cross this bridge. And then it comes over this way. And then also you can see that we're working on the bridge all the way out here towards this is uh, this is on its way back. Now let's just clear it all the way out here towards uh, bricks, which is what you're supposed to be doing. Apparently, I didn't mark this as a high priority for you. Grr. Grr. <laughs> All right, they're going to also be making the bridge and stuff too. So we'll give them a chance to get that stuff done. And um, we're going to look at reconstruction for now. So reconstruction is going to have all new all new stuff. Um, uh, buses wise, anyway. We're going to focus on smaller buses here. And I think I'm going to take and make... I think we'll go with six for now. Six seems like an okay number. Now, reconstruction is very similar to construction, except there's no groundworks. So we're not going to need, I don't believe anyway, that we'll need any dumpers. Uh, I don't think we're going to need any excavators or rollers or pavers. Uh, we may not even, I don't think we're going to need bulldozers and stuff either. We may need concrete mixers, maybe. I don't know yet. Um, so we'll keep an eye out for maybe some stuff on that. But we're definitely going to want some road cranes. And I'm going to use... We're not going to have very many workers, so I think the cheapest one will probably do fine. So we'll do three on the road cranes. Now, the rest of the vehicles we're going to need are covered hulls, open hulls, right? The open hulls are important. Let's do the covered hull first, actually. The covered hulls are important because some of these buildings are going to need their machines to be catered to as well. So it's not just the buildings, but the machines inside. Basically, anywhere where there's a factory. So let's take a look really quick at the gravel processing center. And we can see that the wear and tear is at 45% and the wear and tear of machines is 39%. So there's a good chance that this reconstruction office is going to hit the wear and tear on the machines soon too. If I open the reconstruction window, we can see the number of work days as well as what it would take to reconstruct this right now. What would it take to fix this building right now if I was to start that project? And currently it's queued up. So reconstruction is in progress, right? What is it going to take to make that happen? It's right here. We need mechanical components as well as steel. So naturally, we're going to need a lot of covered hulls and stuff. I don't know exactly how much we're going to need. And part of me actually wants to make these look very different than the rest of what we're doing. But this is a really good vehicle. It's got excellent speed. The cost to what it can haul is pretty decent. 6.5 tons of mechanical components for 11 grand versus uh, less than five for 14 grand and slower. I don't know. Maybe it's just a generational thing. I don't understand it. Um, I'm going to say that I want one, two, three, four covered hulls for this. 
And um, we actually have quite a few spare, I want to say. We have quite a few spare uh, open hulls like this too. So there's this one. It has a route for vehicles. We're going to say that you don't go there. Instead, you go here. Uh, we should have another one. And that is is this one here. It's it's going and taking and transporting the prefab panels over to the rail construction office, right? So when you're done doing that, I'm gonna have you go ahead and park yourself right here, all right? So we're gonna keep an eye on this one, and I think this one here is the same deal. No, this one's part of a building office, so we're gonna leave that alone. I thought there was one more, but I don't see it. Um, what I'd like to do now is let's start getting some of these roads built. I think I'm going to take this away. Nope, let's go like this. We'll take this away. Yep, this one. Take this away. Uh, let's go ahead and cut that too. Now that's going to cut people off from being able to work here temporarily. And I, I think... Uh-oh. Nope, that's not what I want to do. Cancel demolition. Yep, there we go. Uh, I think it's worth it just to make this road a faster project. So we're going to pull this stuff out of here bring this out of here and then um the fire department's gonna have like the be the, the cutoff point here so let's get rid of all these little points and i want to have this road asphalt all the way out to there okay so let's just get that sorted i don't need i don't think i need workers on it but whatever i want it fast uh where'd that truck go damn uh where'd that truck go right here nope it's got to be right here yep so as soon as you're done delivering this, I'm going to have you go off and work for the reconstruction office as well. There you go. And now we have two of the uh, open hulls. We're going to need more than that. And uh, let's let's actually go ahead and see what they've got at the border for now. So what do you got for used stuff at the border here? Open hulls. Uh, I think this is okay. It's a little slow. I, I like... I like these new MZ504s. I think they're interesting vehicles. They're 88 miles per hour. Almost feels like I can I can actually get through time with, with these trucks. You know what I mean? I feel like I can really just capture it, all right? Like there's some sort of good future ahead of me. You know what I mean? Like I don't even need roads. Okay, I, I'm done. <laughs> anyway, um, we're going to say that uh, we're going to buy more of these MZ504s, I think. So let's go to open halls, and we're going to say one, two, three, four. So I don't know exactly know how many vehicles I need for reconstruction, right? So I'm kind of just putting them in there. And um, you know, if I happen to notice that there's uh, a shortage somewhere, maybe... Um, maybe all the open holes are sitting around, but the buses are all gone. Then I can just add more buses, right? That kind of thing. Next thing I need to do is I need to have my fuel rats make sure that they have this as a source so they can keep that fueled so these guys don't have to go to this fuel source instead. And then while this road is getting done, just hopefully very soon. Yep, there's the, uh, the paver being delivered. Very cool. So while this road is getting done and while they are working on their reconstruction projects, which they are no doubt about to start all on their own without me having to tell them, right? There's a lot to do. <laughs> Look at all those reconstruction projects. It's about to get very expensive. And uh, because it's about to get very expensive, I think I probably need to buy more steel. So we're going to do the whole two steps forward, one step back sort of thing here. And we're going to take a loan. We're going to take another loan. And uh, I think it's going to be necessary. And I think we're going to go ahead and borrow... Let's borrow up to 600 grand here. So we're gonna bring ourselves back to 600,000 in debt. Two, five, six. There we go. Just managing the budget, keeping our keeping our monthly expenses on that under 10K, I think is a pretty good thing. And uh, I mean, we're only paying 32 rubles a day. It's nothing, but it's about to be more because I'm gonna have it by steel. So this train, go ahead, buy steel. And I don't think I'm going to have you load crops this time. I think I want you to do one full load on that. So let's just have you go back to the border with what you got and bring me back a bunch of steel, okay? The next thing I'm going to need is mechanical components because I'm completely out of them. And these, a lot of these reconstruction projects, like I said, are going to require them. That and electrical components. So we're going to have you there. And then this warehouse, we actually need an unload command to be on those two things. 
So we'll go ahead and do that. Okay, so now this office is going to manage that warehouse, which means I don't need that dedicated truck to do it anymore. That's pretty nice. Uh, why do you go this way first? Because you already have mechanical components on board. Very good. Okay. So while that's taking place, and that's going to be a process we're going to have, you know, hopefully automated and I don't have to think about it, right? While that's going, I have another project. More cableways. Yes. So I think that we would be a lot more profitable if we could reliably convert. Oh, we have a machines replacement in progress. Look at this. Yeah, wear and tear of machines. So that's going to cost us steel, electrical components, mechanical components. Ugh. It is what it is, man. And uh, the older stuff gets, the more it breaks down. That's, that's just a natural thing, man. Same thing with vehicles. The, the older they are, the faster they wear out. You have to replace them with new models. And we don't have an automated mechanism for doing that yet. But what I think is going to happen here is I'm going to send a cableway right here. I think that's a good idea. So I want this cableway to come in and I want them to park themselves, I think, right. Let's do it like this. Park themselves right here, right? Like, I kind of actually do kind of want this to be closer to that. Right about here, I think is a good idea, All right? We're going to use the footpaths with lamps this time to get that little extra distance. And I'm going to make sure that this goes here and then straight across like this with the lamps. Okay, now why are we using the lamps? Because I really want to cover as many buildings over here as possible, but I know that I can't because they're too far away. But with the lamps, I'm hoping I can get most of them. So I already knew we couldn't get prefabs. That was never going to happen. Cement, not, not going to happen. Uh, but I am surprised and pleasantly surprised, in fact, to see that we can reach the rail construction office. So that's pretty cool. Uh, we can obviously reach concrete and asphalt and gravel. And all that stuff is pretty close. And I want to be able to cover all of these buildings, too. Now, with a little bit of effort and maybe a tunnel, we could get the cableway to also be able to reach the alcohol production. And that is something that we really need to get going. Because I want to be able to convert all these crops faster than we can farm them. And we're going to be farming a lot of them. So I need to be able to have more people to bring brought over here. We have a 2% unemployment rate. So we don't have a whole lot of people right now. But that's growing. And especially as our houses are going up, uh, we're just going to see yeah, more people can be here. Uh, this is full. These are brand new houses that we now have people working in. And uh, we should be seeing really good food production now. I shouldn't have to worry about food at all now uh, with the number of people that we have working in. So that's great. So, cableways, right? Well, we're going to put it here. Well, where is it going to go? Well, I've left this gap here. And um, I did eventually fill it with this, so I'm a little nervous. But this gap was going to be a cableway gap. But I think I've left enough room to kind of go a cut across here and, and head on this side of the tracks here. I think I've done enough room here. So what I'd like to do for this is we're going to go over and add a cableway into this area. Another one. Here's the thing. You can't really cross the cableways. I mean, there's nothing stopping you other than elevation. But since I've got this thing right here, right by the rails, uh, we're not going to be crossing over top of it. So this cableway station is going to be located right here. We're going to use a small one again. And I'm thinking, if we put this right about here, I'm hoping that we can reach. Now, it's not important uh, where this is positioned if I can't get the rail if I can't get the cableway that way. This is a pretty sharp turn. So let me just see I can, if I can do it. We're going to use the heavy poles this time. It is more expensive to set up, but we want a lot more people moving this way. There's like a thousand workers worth of jobs over here. So I have a higher, I have a capacity problem because it's also a very short path too. Well, it's not very short, but it's shorter than the last one. So we're going to have less cars, less cable cars, but... We're going to be able to have uh, more people per car. And it looks like this is way too sharp of a turn. So I, I really do need to get that in here. So tell you what, why don't we start on this side? And what I'm hoping is from the maximum height, I can get over the road without needing another pole. And that does not look like it's going to happen. <gasps> well, never mind. It, I am, yep, it's going to be nice to me. It's going to be nice. 
It's nice to me. So that connects that side. Very good. So that's the first one up there. And we need to go around this reconstruction office, which I should be able to do by just kind of going like, maybe we'll spin it like this side. This is green. It's telling me I can do it. And it's going to let me do it. Very cool. All right? Heavy posts. Very nice. Let's spin it to be this this way. Uh, we're going to go about, let's say, here. And let's angle it. Up there should be good. And I want to see if I can get this in here. Can you let me do it? Not yet. I'm going to need an extra, an extra one. So let's put this post right here. And see if you'll let me. There we go. Okay, so you'll let me go. Let's turn it around this way. Got to make sure that they'll connect with the roads, too. So right about there. Should be good. And then you'll let me do this, but you won't let me place the post. Oh, that's allowed. Yep, that's allowed. And it's up high enough to where it's not going to clip. I like it. All right. And then uh, down here, we should be able to get away, I'm hoping, with... Yeah, okay. So we're going to need to move this. That's what I was worried about. So let's move this. And it really doesn't need moved much. It just needs the angle changed. So I'm thinking we maybe put it like this. Let's have the angle change to about here. Right about there. Okay. Double checking. Connection looks pretty good. And yep. That'll work. And then I just want to get rid of this road because it's not needed. And we're going to make this a dirt road. Right there. Okay. Double checking if the cableway is completely attached. Looks pretty good. No extra points. We are ready to rock and roll. Now, I do have these higher up, and I could have made these ones lower. I could have. Um, but the thing is, we're going such a huge distance. This, this to here is actually a pretty good distance. Um, and we're going over top of things. So I'm just going to play it simple. I'm just going to keep it elevated a little bit. If I end up putting roads underneath here and stuff, I'm going to thank myself later for having lifted this up. Okay? Especially if I'm going to put roads through here. Uh, speaking of which, I need a road through here. So, uh, let's put this road like this. Started with the dirt road for now. Um, and I may want to have this road come across here like this. Just as like a... Like a, like a back road sort of thing. Let's do that. Uh, we're going to put parking lots right here. All this is going to be parking. So, we want multiple ways to get out of here. Uh, and then, we're going to say this road can come straight over from here and then it's gonna have to cross like this this is a back road again it's, it's not meant to be used by anything except for service so you know these little uh dirt roads are perfectly fine for this uh, and then finally this one now this one i think we should probably get some asphalt on this and i'm thinking we'll go probably straight from here so we'll say right down to here like that and then to there okay so that I think is going to be a glorious time and you should reach almost every building not quite you're again you're not going to get to prefabs I knew that but we're still we're still going to have buses what I'm trying to do though is remove the need and dependency on buses I want to have a nice even production cycle not necessarily everything's full but similar to what we got over here where I can reliably click this building and know that there's like at least 10 people in here all the time always and that's what i've got going with all this stuff too uh hang on hold up we cannot store or export plastic waste oh missing mixed waste oh oh isn't that lovely so you're not working because of being full i see plastic waste then um now we have been selling that at the border and i'd like to change that actually uh because we're gonna start uh processing it i wasn't planning to process it yet but let's do it plastic recycling right there uh so what i want to do for this this is all temporary until we get again our actual scrap and waste processing is going to be over there i'm just not ready for it yet um we want to go and get the open storage for free i get to use the free open storage for now and let's go ahead and just put it right here right behind this this garbage right there that's fine with me it's a temporary thing anyway. Then I need to borrow an open haul truck. You there, you're a dumper. 
I don't need to borrow you. I'm not sure if I need a dumper for reconstruction. I am going to dump that coal ore because I don't care. You know what? Let's let's see if a dumper is needed for reconstruction. I'm not sure if it is, but I'll assign it to that office just to see if it is. Um, and then you have a lot of plastic on you. Can you dump that over somewhere? Yeah, you can. Let's get rid of that plastic that you got. Sometimes I got to manage my, my vehicles, right? Unload everything. Yep. And go ahead and just unload. Whoops. That's not what I wanted to do. Unload everything in there. Yep. That's what you're doing now. All right. Need to borrow an open hall. Let's borrow. Man, you guys are full. Look at this. I clearly need more vehicles, don't I? Wow. We have a lot of little micro buses now for this. Lots of little workers being taken to all sorts of different reconstruction projects is what we're on about. Um, I also would like the workers... Should I take it from here? Ah, I don't think so, because... Nah, that's going to rob us of our fuel supply. I should probably take them from here anyway, which I think is what this is being told to do, right? Yeah. Okay, we're going to take them from there then. Um, which is fine. Most of the people who are on the buses from there are going over on this side anyway. Uh, and in fact, there's probably a lot of buses going to coal that I no longer need to do. I no longer need you to go to coal. Is this, what, is this a, Yeah, this one right here. How many buses are on this route? All right, tell you what. Why don't we take this bus, which has workers on it. Crap, never mind. Uh, how about you? You don't have any workers on you. Let's pull you off of this route and stick you into the construction office there. Okay. Okay. I'm just going to remove some people from that route because I think there's too many. With the with this thing operational, we definitely don't need that many. Uh, okay. Speaking of operational, let's get that connected. And we're going to want to get all this stuff constructed. So one, two. Uh, let's make sure all of these have roads. Road there. Uh, you have a road. Yep. Road, road. Everything's got a road except you. Put you there for now. Okay probably shouldn't put it there we want something a bit more permanent right in case of fire i still don't know if fires are really a thing with these things i guess i'll find out later um if it is then it, if you think if they are a fire or if they can catch fire then eventually we would run into that problem you know i'm planning to play this game for like i don't know 400 more hours so <laughs> like i said i hope you're really in for this for the long haul because this is going to be a long long series all right uh, my alarm's going off. Oh, it's almost time to go get my kiddo. I think we can finish this video before I have to leave, though. If nothing else, I'll just pick it up tomorrow and uh, keep playing it tomorrow. Uh, so machine replacements in progress over here, too. It looks pretty good. I, I really wanted to just examine what reconstruction was all about because we've never seen it before. And so um, having a dedicated office for this seems pretty good. It does look like we do need to have some dumpers in here. That is interesting. Okay. Okay. Let's, um... you have any spare dumpers? How about this, uh... There should be one over here. This one right here. Probably not doing much. I think, um... We can probably get rid of this one. The big... Let the big slow ones handle this. While the T-138s can go off and do the construction office things. I'm gonna have you now work over here. Because it looks to me like that office actually can use... Uh, yeah. It actually can uh, benefit from my dump truck. Very cool. It looks like it's a football field, though. So some of these, some things need, you know, like football playground, right? Let's take a look at this. What does it need? The reconstruction, I mean. Uh, mechanism stop. Wait, huh? Maintenance. Yeah, right here. Reconstruction menu. So it needs gravel and concrete. Oh, we do need concrete. Okay, so that's something I learned. We do need concrete. So let's actually get a extra concrete truck. And just to get this thing moving quicker, I think I'm just going to pull one out of here. All right, so let's have you go over there. It's the 138 mixer. You know, I may not be able to get those anymore. Kind of want them to be somewhat consistent. Concrete mixer. I can't get the 138s anymore. I can get the 148s. Not the 138s. Well, I think we're going to do the 148s. So let's do that. We'll grab two concrete mixers here. And let's um, go ahead and put you back in this office. Leave you guys looking the way you are, okay? We'll get the brand new ones for this. So 
Good. All right, we're just going to have a couple of dumpers, lots of covered hulls, and look, they're all out doing things too. So I have a feeling we're going to run out of steel quick. That's just why I've got the train going and getting more. <laughs> there we go. Uh, okay. Brick is here. We're, you know, we're not able to move the brick with trains yet. I'd very much like to do that. This is still a high priority, but the trains aren't doing it. They'd rather work on the bridge instead, and I don't want them to. Where's that? Where is it? Right here. I'm, get, I'm getting lost. Okay, let's take and have you go right there. All right, let's make sure that's on there. Do we want another EDK 300? I mean, it could be cool. If the price is right. It's not. Okay, never mind. Um, just curious, what is it brand new now? Not train sets, track builders. Uh, 167 now. The tunnel boring machine is over half a million rubles. I don't know how I got that so easily. So cheap. Man. The wear and tear wasn't even that bad. So, so cheap. Are you going to get more steel? I'm nervous about the steel purchases right now. 91? Look at all the money we spent last... What did we spend it on? What did we spend it on? Uh, it was vehicles imported, right? 146 of it was vehicle imports, but I want to know this. Okay, so that's a lot of steel. Electrical components was a big factor. I think we're probably going to have that this time too. Yeah, because all the machinery and stuff that we're making needs electrical components too. So we may need another loan. But it's a temporary thing. Because what I'm hoping for is when we get the reconstruction office really working nonstop, we'll start to get projects trickling in. And it'll be sort of a small, regular thing as opposed to an infrequent, huge bulk order. And uh, I think it'll be more manageable that way. We'll see. As far as getting these things repaired, though, I might need another repair center. I'm, I'm, I don't know. I don't know. Like, these guys say they have nothing to repair right now. So maybe not. But uh, I think, you know, we have two vehicles there that can go to remote places. We've got three vehicles here that can go to remote places. These two can go. These two can go to remote places, too. So, I mean, I, I mean there's like seven repair trucks. I feel like that's enough. And they're spread out on there, there, and there. Like a triangle of coverage, okay? I feel like that's good enough. So maybe it's not a big deal. Uh, what is a big deal is we are now out of money. So I'm going to have to borrow again. I knew this was going to happen again. We have we have repairs to make and everything. So let's just, let's just get it on, all right? Just do it. Rip it off like a Band-Aid. 595-022. Just get it all done. This warehouse full, probably. It's mostly... I think it's my distribution office, really. Because they are... They're sending them. That, that's like 15 grand worth of electrical components that just entered that warehouse. So, there's a lot of stuff happening there. And I could have the train do it instead. I could. But this is automated. On demand when needed. I don't have to think about it. To where that train over there, I have to tell it exactly what I want. And it's going to bring it here every time. And there's mixed... Uh, what do you call it? There's a, there's a term for that, I forget. Mixed something with a train where you have different things on the train. Consis, I think maybe is what it was called, or something like that. Anyway, uh, I would like to, uh, you know, get the... That's what this is for, right? When this is set up, then I don't have to worry about trucks doing that anymore. And I can slowly start to remove vehicles from the road, which is kind of what I'm working on. It's removing vehicles from the road, slowly but surely. Okay. The rail's done all the way out to here. Uh, I would like to get... I think... Let's take a look really quick at what our loyalty is going on here. So these guys are all above 30. 37% government loyalty here with 90% health. I think we're doing great. But, you know, we're just waiting. Just, I feel the storm coming. Okay. Anything could happen at a moment's notice. I'm going to reduce this to 25 firefighters so we can have more people working other jobs. And look at all this. Yeah, look at all this. Okay, we have a backup in our crime system because we are missing warders again. Oh, we're missing warders. Oh, it's because of this, the loyalty. I got to reduce the loyalty here. Yeah, let's bring this down to 47. Um... 
Damn. I'm missing professors too, right. So let's bring this down to 25. Until people are actually loyal enough to work here, I should have, have this reduced. That's a problem. So warders come back to work and the prisoners return. <laughs> no, you're not escaping us. I don't know if that's supposed to be that way, but it is. It's very cool. Uh, let's get a couple more bio waste containers here just in case. Uh, yep. Looks pretty good. We actually have some plastic waste. So I have started to try to give people uh, a means to sort things. And I thought certain places will probably have plastic. And one of the places I thought would have that would be near a shopping center. And wouldn't you know it, they're sorting their plastic waste. This is great news. I would like my trash people to not take it to the customs house. It is money, but we're gonna turn it into even more money. So dump your plastic waste here instead, okay? Uh, we're gonna go over to this side and we're gonna tell you to do the exact same thing. Place your plastic waste on in here. Now this is gonna take a long time to pick up, but it's gonna be worth it, I think. I think it'll be worth it. Uh, speaking of getting it worth it, we probably should get that open haul truck that I said I needed a long time ago. Let's get one of those. I'll steal it from, uh, I can't really steal it from the construction office, can I? Doesn't seem like there's a whole lot, whole lot to steal here. Uh, how about one of you? You. Uh, let's take this truck. I want you to come over to here. You're going to load plastic waste. Wait to load it. And uh, let's dump it over here. There you go. My alarm's going off again. Isn't that great? All right. Take this and go. Okay. So that'll get the plastic waste out of here, which should allow our garbage to clear up and start being processed again. We have lots of workers through here because of the cable cars, but we need them to stay productive. So, you know, maybe if you could kindly stay productive. And I'm probably going to have to split this into two separate videos, aren't I? Or at least two different, two different sittings because... You know, the daycare awaits. Did you know my daycare service, right? A lot of you guys live interna in a internationally, right? I've had comments where it's like, wait, is, is daycare expensive in the United States? Yes, it's incredibly expensive in the United States. It's because we don't get a whole lot of taxes, right? Some of you guys, you know, like Germany or whatever, you guys pay like half your income in taxes. You get a lot of stuff for that. I, I'm not saying which way is the right way to do it. I'm not gonna make that call because I'm not educated enough to make that call. But what I will say, is that while it is expensive here, my effective tax rate last year was 14%. Okay? So I'm just saying we use the money on what we actually use instead of just giving it away. Okay? Uh, so it's expensive um, to the point where I'm, I'm paying, well, it's $80 a day. So calculate that for however many days I'm using it. At the moment, I'm just using whatever Patreon and, and uh, members uh, can can provide. So I'm just basically spending every penny of that. And it's about 75 or so percent members right now, uh, patrons. You guys are covering about 75% of the minimum two day a week that I'm sending my, my kid off to daycare so that I can record you guys' videos. Uh, and I'm I'm loving that. Oh, it's so good to have that. Th these, these days where I can just kind of well, just work. These days where I have uh, a time to just focus and the house isn't noisy and there's no potential for wah, wah, to like pull me away. I love it. Thank you. It's so great. I'm hoping that the content is worth it. Um, you know, for you guys and for me, and so far it's definitely worth it for me, but I'm a little biased in that I'm the one playing a video game and hopefully you guys are the ones that are entertained. Um, that's not said I'm entertained as well, but, uh, Anyway, research is finished. Yay! So power grid connection for the Soviet countries is done, which means we can create our own power grid. I wanted to see what that's like. We're not going to use it yet, but I kind of want to see what that's like. So presumably what we can do with that research. This is the power grid research we saw at the very beginning. And we thought, oh, we have to research in order to export power? That's crazy. No. How it works, I believe, is we get access to this one. I just happened to notice there was an extra button. I had no idea what this looked like. I just looked over here and said, oh, look, extra button. Foreign power connection. It costs 22 steel, the basic resources, 2.8. It's actually pretty reasonable. And you build this on the border. 
that's interesting. So you can't... You have to have all the connectors on your side. Okay, I see. So uh, there's not very many connectors because there's a road connection on it right now. These, these ones don't have road connections. But there's a high voltage in. That's the important thing. And so you could do something like this. And now you have your own... You have like a new forward power connection, which I can just tap power into and ta-da, I'm selling more power, right? And I can do this all on the border. It has to be, part of it has to be in the border, right? You can't just build it inside, but as long as you're touching the border, you can build it there. That's pretty cool. All right, that's awesome. Now that I know how that works and I could do it with NATO, right? So before I was like, I want to sell power to NATO. I got to come all the way over here for it. That's really far away, but over here is technically not as far away. I mean, it's still far, but I don't have to go over a river, right? I can just take a land connection straight over. So not bad. Um, we do have research for a pipe connection as well. If I take a look at the next research, there's a foreign pipeline connection. Now this is a brand new thing. We've never been able to, as far as I'm concerned, as far as my knowledge goes, we've never been able to have a pipe directly hooked up to a foreign border before. It's always been something you had to take with a train or a, a plane or, a, you know, obviously a truck. But with a foreign pipeline connection, we should be able to just send them stuff over a pipe. Seems very cool to me. Uh, we're going to really quick stop buying electrical components because that is killing my budget. And I really don't want to go into debt because of this. So I'm just going to pull back on that a little bit and the plastic because that's really kicking my ass right now. <laughs> Look at this. Steel is... The, oh, steel's the big thing. Electrical components was a big thing too, objectively, but uh, steel's been a big thing. And uh, it looks like he's on the way back with 144 tons more. Okay. So we are... Uh, we're going to stop buying steel as well. That's enough steel. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Uh, go ahead and load up on your crops again. Thanks. Jeez, oh, Pete's. And then, yeah, right there. Mm -hmm, very good. And then from here, we could load some stuff and maybe sell it again. But we do need a loan again. So just like that, we're back in debt. How about it? Let's go like that. 840 and then 795, uh, 651. That's fine. I'll pay the penalty later. But look at my availability to borrow. It's 5.2. 5.2. What, what am I saying right now? 5.4. It says it right there on the screen, dumbass. Hey, 5.4 million is what I can, uh, what I'm able to import, which is kind of crazy. I'm not sure what I would spend 5.4 million rubles on. That's like three times what I started with. Available as credit line now. I must have proven myself worthy. Is it time to, uh, to get into the pipeline, though? With all the steel we just imported, there's a whole lot of it, and it's just going to be more now. Look at that. Oh... Uh, Oh, that's a thumbnail right there. I might have imported too much steel. It's possible that I imported just a little bit too much steel. <laughs> you there, ogre, a train ogre. I want you to turn around and load other stuff so you can sell it, uh, or not. Tell me you got clothes. Is there clothes available? No. No, there's no clothes available. What's the deal with clothes? Oh, well, they can't get there because of this road construction. Yeah, yeah, true. But this is done now, so I can I have to hook this back up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My bad, everyone. My bad. So we've been uh, kicking out fabric like crazy. We're good there. We have 28 spare plus the extra 15, or 10 or so in there. But... Uh, yeah. That's pretty nuts. This is a backup. I, I need to do something about this. I do really wish that I had uh, thought about bypasses here. Uh, one thing I really wish you could do in this game that you, can, you actually can't do is make a bridge with a one-lane road. That would be very good. Because um, I would love to take the one-lane road off from right here, bridge up and over and down. That would be awesome, but I can't do that. Um, so one thing I could do for this though, to really kind of make this a little bit better is to have this come in from this side and leave that side. So they never enter the roundabout in the beginning in the first place. I think that would probably be the best way to go about this. Let's have these trucks not enter the roundabout at all. 
but we'll say that this is gone and yeah, this is gone all right and anybody who comes in here for stuff you don't enter the roundabout you go around that roundabout okay and that that's i hope that will make it better um and then another thing i could potentially do oh that's that that's a problem so i what I want to do is, is make a one-way road, and I, I can't do that either. So how about we we have to pave it if we're going to do this way, right? Yeah, we have to pave this. Okay, new plan. One-way road. One-way road. Uh, what are you? This technical office? You got to go. You just got to go. Get out of here. Uh, you belong to here now, and this is gone. All right, I need to get that, get rid of that. So what I want to do now, I think, is we're going to go in and take this one-way road. All right, and we can't make a bridge with it, but what I could maybe do... Uh, nope, I have to go here, maybe. Am I not allowed to do this because of the vehicle? Okay, that's a game crash, so I'm going to have to redo this part. But essentially what I'm going to work up here is I'm going to get rid of this technical service office and um i would like to i think get a one-way road and maybe i could even start it here although i think that'll be a problem because of this walkway here but i'd like to get a one-way road that maybe starts right here and then leads into here so that they can't exit here and then they can enter from this side if they come to the roundabout they'll be able to enter from this side um but they have to exit this side they can't get here and that's i'm hoping that frees up the traffic right here um, but yeah, one way, one thing I wish I had done a little bit differently in this side is what I'm going to do over here. I wish I had done here what I'm going to do over here. Um, and that is to have a bridge that comes through the middle. So one lane roads, uh, going in this direction. And then in the middle of that, there's a two way road that gets merged from them, a bridge that goes over top of the roundabout and then merges back into the two way road. You'll see that over there once I'm done making it. Um, but I wish I had done that here because it would allow a lot of these these trucks that are going to go straight through to not have to wait for all these trucks in here. So um, I'm going to redo this again, just like I was doing before, and um, you know, and while I let everything else build and all that stuff, and I'll be right back. Okay, so I was just tinking around with it some more, and um, I've decided that this is the simplest approach. We're just going to have any vehicle that needs gravel or asphalt, they're going to bypass the roundabout entirely. They're going to come in from this side that's where they all come from and they're going to get in here do the thing they need to do and they're going to leave that direction outside the roundabout and they're going to continue this direction then as they get out to about here where the train construction uh, office is train distribution is not going to have hardly any traffic to where this will so we're going to say that this is where a a intersection happens where they can turn around really quick here if they need to um, obviously they can go all the way to this roundabout but i'd like them to be able to do it quicker if they need to uh, we can also have another one right here which allows these guys to leave and go that way. Uh, so these are gonna be one way this direction and one way that direction, basically in the middle of this. Uh, so this is the simplest road. Now, of course, the problem with this, as you can probably tell, is that there's no way for me to place the gravel and asphalt here while this is disconnected. We don't have access to those sources. So road crew is gonna have to temporarily have their gravel source placed at a border. And same thing with asphalt. Temporarily, we're going to need that to be done. But I'm hoping it's very temporary because everybody needs this stuff. So we are going to have to uh, go in and make sure that this is a high priority, very high priority to get this road completed. And uh, I think pretty much you know, workers and everything, just everybody come on in here and do this. It's the only road you can do because you're getting your sources from elsewhere. Now, I don't want them buying asphalt for all of these things, gravel for all of these things. So I'm going to take away the auto search, cancel all their assignments, bring them all back home, but that they are only doing this single job right now to get this done. And that is, that's how high priority I'm making that. Okay. So everybody go forth and do the things that you want to do. Um, I still have to make this stuff asphalt too. And then all of this stuff in here, as they're navigating all the different sources they can pick up, it's all still dirt. So I got to do something about that, too. I, I, I mean, I know what I'm going to do. It's just I haven't done it yet. Uh, so hopefully with this, we can clear up a lot of the traffic in this, pro in this process. Uh, again, I wish I had made it differently. Um, it's just not 
not something I can do right now. I would love to have a bridge in, the, in between this that goes over top of the roundabout. I opted for the Red Star Monument instead, which we need to add more of. We need to build more Red Star Monuments too to help with that loyalty. So uh, over here, I think, is another good place for a Red Star Monument. Uh, so I'm going to place one right here too. Actually, right in the middle of this is fine. Yeah, this is good. Right here. That'll take care of... Uh, that'll take care of any uh, people who think that they can mess with our loyalty. Any people who want to talk bad about the government. They can just look at my Red Star Monument and say, Oh, actually, I love them. Now I love them. Uh, let's see. How about one right here? This looks kind of cool. Right next to where the helicopter would be. It's pretty close to this, though. I don't know about Red Star, but we could totally put something else here. All these little Shevchenko things. What's the range on these things? 400 meters. Yeah, yeah. Put one of these here. That's pretty good. Stick that there with a little dirt path. No biggie. Sign this stuff to the construction office, too, so they can get, them, get to doing that. Uh, it looks like this is done, and we don't have any workers. We have passengers. So let's get the workers. And we have all of this completed, except here. We don't have that done yet. So we want workers to be able to get there. Of course, this road needs done and all that needs to be built, which is fine because we want to have cable cars brought here too. So this right here, let's turn off the workers for now. And then we want to get uh, deliveries for cable cars and stuff brought here too. So I'll get on that while I let it run. And uh, hopefully after the cut here, I got to go get my daughter. But after we come back uh, from this little cut, this will be done and ready to go. And then um, the cable cars hopefully will be working or cableway will hopefully be working. Okay, they're done with this road, um, but I'm going to have another problem here, uh, so I'm going to go ahead and pause it. Um, I want to kind of deviate from this little plan uh, at the end of the video and talk about something else that's going on that I'm noticing that I want to address. So for starters, I think we can address the traffic issue just by doing this at the moment. But what I want to do is I need to get these roads to kind of be as far over here as possible. And I'm going to say even like that would be fine. Uh, and then I want this road to kind of come up like this, too. So we're effectively going to make this like an all gravel area eventually. But for now, I need access to this stuff. While that was going on, I did redirect the trucks to get their gravel from this storage instead of the border. That was a bit of a mistake to do the gravel there. I don't know why I did that. Um, so I, I did get them to do it from here instead, which makes way more sense, of course. Um, we're going to have the road crew get theirs uh, from here. And then the, our building crew here is going to get their gravel from uh, this one. So they can still separate those sources just fine. Uh, and then, of course, the asphalt needs to be getting from here. Okay. So with that being done, I want to take a look at something else. And that is waste. Okay. Waste is a thing that is going to cause us a problem if we don't address it. And as I create more and more density of people here... I'm going to start seeing my waste fill up. The other thing I'm going to start seeing is that I have special bins here. I, I'm, I'm creating special bins here because I'm noticing that they're dropping off plastic waste in here and metal scrap. In fact, over 10% of these mixed waste canisters are plastic. So I've added plastic storage so that they can start um, you know, sorting that a little bit easier, a little bit uh, smarter. And so I'm going to add uh, you know, plastic storage and metal scrap storage to this as well. However, there is something that happens when you do this. And I think this is probably something that will be overlooked. So if you're somebody new playing this game, remember that trucks, one simple fact will make this very clear on what the problem is going to be. Garbage trucks only transport one type of waste at a time. Okay? Repeat this. One type of waste at a time. That's very important. 
because the truck that's coming over to pick up the mixed waste is not going to pick up the biological waste. Another truck has to pick this up, and it's going to keep building up as it, as it goes. And if any of your garbages get full, it creates a lot of pollution in that area. So this one, for example, is 83% full right now. I have specialized storage for plastic. There's a couple in here for for metal but that's gonna fill up pretty quick so i'm gonna want to probably get another one for metal and probably another one for plastic as well uh right there plastic uh, i need to probably remove one for biological and leave the extra mis mixed canisters here there's just not enough storage for this garbage so i need to go in and uh make sure that there is enough storage for garbage i'm gonna place another one right here i think and uh, what I'm hoping to do is place this in such a way that I'm going to be able to continue my walking path shenanigans uh, right next to the next to the rail. Yep, like that. That's what I'd love to do. And I'd love to get some propaganda and stuff going in here as well. But for now, all of the waste bins are going to be a high priority construction project. All of them. They are going to be very, very important. Um, and I'm going to add more of them because you see things... Over here, you know, like, there's burnable waste in that. That one's good. Uh, this one's just a regular small one. If you use the small ones, you can't sort. But the big ones you can. So you can see how the, the display is very different. So I've been using a lot of the big ones. There's pros and cons. And I didn't think there were any cons to this, but there definitely is. Uh, I, was, I just wasn't thinking about it, right? There are definitely cons to having your citizens sort their garbage as opposed to just dumping it all in a, mixed, in a mixed bin. And the cons to this is you need a lot more garbage trucks because, again, they are not going to pick it up at the same time. So if everything was getting dumped into one bin, then the mixed, mixed waste truck comes in, it empties it out for you. Very cool. Except uh, that's not happening here. So lots of hazardous waste. I need to do something about that. This one has uh, burnable. So like going through each one of these and trying to figure out what they're dumping is probably a good idea because they'll flat out tell you what they're dumping. This right here, there's metal scrap in here and plastic in here. We could maybe be a bit more efficient with this if we turned some of these into, like, say, plastic waste, metal, etc. Could we maybe be more efficient that way. But in order to do this, you're gonna have to have more trucks. So let's start that. I think that um, I've kind of been debating on whether or not I want to do it here or over here. And I've, I've settled on here because it's pretty equally close to all the garbage bins that I'm going to have. Um, but it's closer to the dump. And uh, I think this area here is more valuable to me since it's right next to the store. So as, as far as like expanding to like more homes and stuff, this is much uh, better real estate. Especially with the... Uh, no, not, this is not a passenger station. This is a cargo station. Never mind. Whatever. I'm wrong about that one. But... If I take a look and I go over to technical services, I'm going to need to add probably like three or four more of these things and have a ton of garbage trucks everywhere. That's just going to have to happen, which means the road network, right? It has to be built to withstand this, right? Lots more traffic is going to be on the roads now. So you have to be built to withstand this. So I'm going to say we probably put this thing about right here. I just want it built for now. So we're going to start with the dirt road and we can pave it later. Uh, next, I think I, need, I think I need another one. I think I'm gonna need, I need like 17 of these things. But we're going to do another technical service offices. Uh, we have one on this side that will address it for over here. I think we need one near the hospital. And I'm tempted to put it kind of like right over next to this in the mountainside. Next to this little hill. I suppose it's not really a mountain per se. But I'm kind of tempted to nest it in right with this hill here. Maybe, maybe off right here so that I can uh, connect a road like this. What if I was to do... Yeah, you're not going to let me flatten this area a little bit more, are you? Yeah. So I I'm thinking we uh, put this technical service office right here. This is too close to existing buildings. I see. Well, what if I did... If I did this... Can the road still connect? That's the big question. If I go like this, can the road still connect? It can. Okay. So I want to get these to be high construction as well. High priority constructions as well. Okay. Because I need more garbage trucks right now. 
I have added, while that road was building, this tiny little one, okay? And I've added three garbage trucks to it. I don't know where they are. They're probably en route or they wouldn't be in the list if they're en route. So they already arrived. But they're out doing things as best as they can right now to deal with that problem. Come up here. This one's already 105%. And it's a lot of this is biological. We could have saved. Uh, we could have gotten biological waste from this. So uh, again, tactical services is needed. I'm thinking probably I'm going to remove. Where is my snowplow one? I have a temporary one in here for snowplows. You. These free tactical offices. I'm thinking all of you snowplows are just going to take a quick break. All right, you're not. I know that winter is coming, but um, you know what else is really needed? Garbage collection. So, yeah, you're gonna take a hike, and then we're gonna get rid of this technical service office. I don't know. I don't think he has to be clear of it, but just to prevent any bugs, I'm gonna wait till he's clear of it. Yep. Okay. Then we're gonna use this technical service office, this free one. All right. Right here. And I'm going to pop another free one in here. Uh, just, again, to help with that garbage problem. I kind of want to nest it nearby this one. Because this is a, still a good location. I'll just put it right here for now. And uh, once again, we're going to buy just brand new waste trucks, man. And I'm going to go max capacity. Um, I, I, think, I think it might... No, I don't think it's worth it. Because you're getting so many mixed types of stuff. And, well, you want them to pick up as much as possible before they take off, right? So maybe it is worth it. I'm going to do it anyway. Whatever. We're gonna, I'm going to change my philosophy on this again, and we're going to get three of these. All right. So when they arrive, they'll go ahead and do the same thing. And we're going to have you copy your settings to there. And you're doing this within 1,000 meters so that you don't go way over there. Um, we had some garbage trucks over here. And... Uh, they should be hitting this, but perhaps this is... These are small containers, and the trucks we have over here are the trucks for the... Uh, you're a truck for... Small containers or big containers? Can't tell by the... Can't tell by the picture. I don't think there's a way to tell. It looks like small containers to me. Yeah, that looks like a small container truck. I think they all are yeah so they're out doing things i don't know where they're going but they're out doing things uh this one's going you know all the way to biological waste yeah yeah you dump it off over here which we're doing really well with we've got lots of fertilizer there is a current i don't want to say it's a bug but other people are having this exact same problem where fertilizer shows up here right and because fertilizer is in here you can't dump your biological waste anymore which makes no sense because this is a one-way path, and it should not be doing it this way, but it is. And so you end up not being able to uh, set biological waste in here. And the fertilizer ends up outputting. It's like it's backwards. I have no idea how to fix that problem, honestly. So what we end up with, I think, and this might be the reason why so many trucks are, are not doing their job right now. That's actually, I'm discovering this right alongside you. All of these trucks, I bet you, are tied up with biological waste at the moment. To the extent that they aren't picking up other things. And maybe that's why my garbage is, is overloading. Because this is 100% full. And it should be, you know, cranking it out. But, the, you know, right now it's a sewage problem again. But uh, that's what the sewage trucks are for. Hmm. Now, that's an interesting thing. So, if these guys are, are not able to drop it off where they're supposed to... That would be the biggest problem. I would want them to dump it in here, but they can't. So this is my this is my problem. They were supposed to dump their biological waste here. And it's full of fertilizer. It's not supposed to be. Can I store fertilizer in another place? Can I pick it up out of here and just drag it out of here all the time? Is there a place that stores fertilizer? Uh, I guess, it's, is it just a dump? Or is it open storages that do this? I think you have to store it in the dump, which is odd, but I mean, if it works, it works. No, I don't think it does. So it's not a dump. So like, where does fertilizer get stored? It's considered waste, but it's not in the list anyway. Well, I guess it's there. 
Hmm. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe we need all of these guys to just drop it here and we just dump a ton of fertilizer here instead. Or I could have you bring it in from here. Is there a way I can factory connect this? There's only one factory connection. I don't know. I think that's the issue, though, is the, the fertilizer that this is generating is going into this bin, even though I told it not to. And I'm not the only one that experiences this problem. Uh, this has already been reported, so... Perhaps this is just one of those beta pains we're going to have to deal with. But it's going along. Dealing with it is easier said than done. You are dropping off fertilizer, which you're completely full on, by the way. So I need more storage for fertilizer. And I'm thinking maybe we swap this. And we say that fertilizer gets stored here. If that's the case, then how we're going to have to play this we select fertilizer here and then biological waste from all these technical service offices biological waste needs to be taken uh to this building which is not a great fit for me it really isn't but i think that's what's got to happen so all of my technical service offices need to be told to take their biological waste here instead uh over here we do the same thing biological waste goes here and then uh, you, biological waste, goes uh, here. I think that's all of them other than the temporary ones. The temporary ones are going to have to be changed too. And you might be thinking, okay, well, why don't you just, you know, do the whole copy-paste thing? Well, I have different delivery locations for mixed waste for each one of these. Yes, I could just go copy, 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 and then change only to that. And uh, if I had thought about that before this little mini monologue about it, then I would have uh, just done it that way. Since I, it's actually faster at this point for me to uh, uh, to just keep going with this. There's less clicks if I just keep going with this now. So uh, I believe like that will take care of it. And so now these trucks have been told to take their biological waste here. So assuming we can get the sewage situation under control here which I would very much like to do. Uh, the sewage tank for this is how full? 124%. Okay. Okay. So, you know, maybe we should get a sewage system. At least one tank. One septic tank. One sewage tank right here that could just, you know, take care of this. So that's going to be another high priority construction. <laughs> I know everything's a high priority, but it's all important because if my if my all of my garbage trucks are sitting around with biological waste right now, that's no good. Maybe just to solve this problem, and you know what? I'm gonna do this instead. To solve the problem, I'm gonna tell them to take their biological waste to the border. All right, that's gonna be my solution in the near term. We're gonna pay people to take our biological waste right now until we can get these trucks back because I'm I'm really confident that. We don't have enough garbage trucks for all of the mixed waste, uh, all the separation that's taking place in town. We don't have enough trucks for it. Okay, we'll round this video out uh, by just saying that that worked. Uh, let's send all the biological waste to the border. That worked for a little bit. Costed me a little bit of money, but it's insignificant. And now I've got it back to where all the garbage trucks are going to dump their biological waste directly into this building. And we'll just kick it out to here, to fertilizer. So uh, I, I don't know exactly what's going on with that bug, but it was supposed to be a one-way thing, and it isn't. So in other words, it's, it's okay, though, because like the fertilizer should be here anyway. We're trying to store a whole bunch of it, so I suppose it's probably fine. Uh, the one thing I will need to do, though, is to take this garbage truck, which is unloading fertilizer until unloaded. Uh, and I'm going to have to tell this thing to, uh, instead of going to the composting plant, right, we're going to have to have it... Uh, come to here although i don't think it'd be that big of a deal because it waits until loaded anyway on this and when it comes here it can just when they create the fertilizer they'll just dump it into the truck instead of this so this or, sort of serves as our extra which is perfect because when we start doing lots and lots of fields there won't be any extra anymore at least i don't think there will be anyway uh okay so i'm thinking we are we're probably pretty good here to wrap this video up i just wanted to you know kind of show you guys that there is a potential problem for waste, but I have the overlay still on. You can see all green numbers, and it looks like we're in good shape. So I may not need so many technical service offices after all. I may not need them. I'm going to pause them really quick. 
Uh, most of the resources are brought, but not the expensive stuff. I'm going to pause them really quick just to see if that works. I sort of wish I would have uh, realized that before, you know, going into that in the video, but I'm not going to cut it out. I, I want you guys to see sort of what I experience and as I experience it. And if I if I have, you know, some kind of revelation go, oh, aha moment, um, you know, as long as that record is running, I'm going to show it to you. So uh, maybe we figured it out before these uh, had a lot of resources committed to them and a lot of people committed to them, possibly. Uh, let's go over real quick, and I'm going to tell this thing to back to, go back to auto-searching, because it can, and then it'll go up and do that again, alright? And then no reconstruction projects for you. We shouldn't see reconstruction projects on any of these. I still have the road office not doing auto-search, because there's still a few roads and stuff that I would like it to finish and really focus on. And I have a tendency to say, you know, high priority and on everything, I know. So we'll get that taken care of. Um, over here, by the way, in case you're wondering how these little loops here work, because I think they work quite well. What you can do here is you can tell uh, vehicles which lane to take. So if you're ever wondering, like, how do I tell them what lane to take? Well, that's what I've done here. Notice every single vehicle coming in from this side will always be on the right side of the road, at least until after they pass this point. And every single vehicle that turns is always going to be on the left side of the road. This is done through the intersection tool. This little thing here signifies that they're not allowed to enter this side. Since vehicles are not allowed to enter from this lane uh, coming in here, they won't. And so what ends up happening here is that all these vans, now they shouldn't be yielding, that shouldn't happen, but it might have had something to do with the train or something there. Um, all these vans will continue on in the right lane, and anyone who's turning left here will take a left and be on this side. And then later on, if they need to switch, they'll switch over into a different lane. But they don't do it right here. And that allows this turnaround to exist really well in that direction. We could do the same thing here by saying that you're not allowed to be on the left lane. And so right, right away, we have all of these guys. If they turn, then cool. They're going to be on the left lane. But if you're going straight, at, straight through, you're going to be on the right lane. And so all of these vehicles will always be on the right side of this road, at least until they cross this point. And then they can merge over and uh, get to the next lane if they'd like to. So uh, that's what these little turnaround parts are. It's supposed to help traffic flow and not have to uh, require them to get to the roundabout. So I'm doing the same thing here. We're going to have another one right here. And this is going to allow vehicles to go this direction. So we're going to allow them to uh, come in from top to bottom. And then uh, same thing. This is mostly for these vans so that they can get out and, and get to where they need to go sooner. And then um, we're going to have another one right here, which is the same thing, except in the opposite direction, just to allow anyone who wants to turn around to do so. And I'm I'm kind of thinking, it, a part of me says it should be the other way around, but because this is right there coming out, that's the way I'm going to do it. And uh, yeah, so that helps me to govern their lanes. So if I've, again, if I take a look at the road, if I look at this, there will always be, everyone coming from this side will always be in the right lane, not the left. And these guys will always turn into the left lane. And that's supposed to prevent any problems. And then of course, this lane here has the right of way so that they don't stop. They just keep going, okay? All right, uh, I think that's it for this video. It's taken a very long time. Uh, for those of you who love hour plus long videos, you're welcome. For those of you who are like, gosh, this is too long, I apologize for that. I'm, I usually try to aim for 45 to 55 minutes, but with this series, I just I, I always overstretch that too far. It just, I always go a little too far. All right, take it easy. We'll see ya. Bye-bye.